So my name is Jessica, and I have a black screen. And I'm going to talk to you today about dancing. It's something that scares a lot of people. And eventually I'll get a presentation. We'll see what our technical dif difficulties end up as. But the big question you have to ask yourself is, do you want to dance? It's a yes or no question. But it's a question that scares a lot of people because it's a question that invites connection with a stranger. Oh my god. And you have to be open to the possibility of connection, whether you're the asker or the askee. But we used to ask questions like this all the times when we were a kid. The biggest one is, do you want to play? So the last time you were on a school playground or at a school playground, how many times do you think you heard the question, do you want to play in one hour? Now, in the last week or so, how many times did you engage in a moment of connection with an absolute complete stranger. I'm guessing that those numbers are very different. And that's because we learn to fear connection. We learn to fear rejection. And that kills the opportunity for connection. So I'm going to talk to you tonight about how dance may be a new game you can play. It's a way, an activity, just like any other hobby, where you can connect with other people, both people you know and people you don't know. And like any game, it actually has some basic rules, and they're not that scary or that complicated. So dancing is, at its base, moving rhythmically to a beat. It doesn't matter if you are a beginner or if you are a pro. If you have 20 hours or 10,000 hours, you are all moving rhythmically to a beat. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, beat means danceable music. There is lots of non-danceable music. The way to tell if music is danceable is two parts. One, when the music style evolved, did a tandem dance style evolve? So swing dancing would be one example. So would hip hop. Two, all you lovely people are sitting in a chair. If I turned on music, how many of you would start moving in your chair? How many of you could stop yourself from doing it? There you go. That is danceable music. Everything else is not. So once you have danceable music, you actually have to move to it. This is the interactive portion, if any of you are adventuresome enough to join me. Moving by this, I mean ergonomic movement. Can I bend my knees? Can I raise my hands? Can I put them in front of me? This would be what a physical therapist would call standard range of motion. We're not talking splits. So you start with athletic posture. And that's head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Everything balanced, kind of upright. I could dodge or I could run from this posture. It's not too complicated. And from there, you start pulsing. So a pulse is the bass rhythm in any song. And you can pulse on the beat, but you can also play with rhythm. So I could choose to pulse slower. So I'd be pulsing one, two, three, four, or one, hold, two, three, hold, four, one, hold, two, three, hold, four. Or I can play with the rhythm and I can speed it up. So I'd be doing one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four. Now that one's awkward because we rarely ever go that fast for an entire measure's worth of music. But it gives you the idea that with one movement and one rhythm, I can play with it in at least three different ways. So moving beyond that, you don't want to just stand stationary the entire time like a little robot. So you might want to try step touching back and forth. And this is also something that you can do at three different rhythms. So I can do on beat or I could do slow, or I could do fast. One and two and three and four. Now, the key part here for any movement is if you're gonna go slow, go big. You have the time. You don't wanna go here, wait, wait, wait for the beat. Here, wait, wait, wait for the beat. And same thing, if you're going fast, you need to make it small and tight. Now, you can also move around with step touch. You could go forward, you could go back. If anyone is having flashbacks to the electric slide, you should be. <laughs> because the electric slide really contains all the basic moves you ever need to do general dancing out in the real world. Now your hands. I always get this question, what do I do with my hands? Well, you can keep them in neutral position like this. They can pulse up, forward, side, down. They can pulse at different rhythms from your lower body, which is called layering, and is a more advanced practice, which just means you actually practiced. So here we go, practice. Good dancing takes about 20 hours of practice to get to. And that breaks out to about 20 minutes a day for 60 days. After that, it's just maintenance. But the first part is teaching your brain to understand rhythm, to hear it, 
So find songs you actually like to dance to. Brilliant, right? And then go out and dance to them. So hopefully, the next time you hear, so would you like to dance, your answer will be yes. And I will get a chance to see you on the dance floor. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.